Hi, welcome. It's Chris Petri. Thanks for coming by, for watching. We're going to cover my Schmincke palette for YouTube. So, all of you are very familiar with this palette here, which I'll kind of slide this out of the way. This is my palette that I use always, you know, not always, but a lot of videos I'll use this palette or the Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set. But this is the Schmincke palette that I use, and I customized it. And I'll zoom in so you can kind of see a little bit closer. And I'm sure you've, you're all super familiar with this. So this was a, a Schmincke palette that I customized and put, you know, customized pans, uh, paint pans in to this palette so that um, I could get exactly the colors that I wanted into the pan, uh, into the palette. So I, I, I'll show you exactly how I did this in just a second. So we're going to get started on the whole re um i'm going to redo my palette i'm going to actually this is the standard palette that we use on youtube continuously all the time my schminke palette with my customized pans so we can see that clearly right and you see that i had a few of these are sectioned off i used a small credit card and cut pieces of credit card and then crazy glued those in if you're going to do any customizing work with um crazy glue i always suggest that you use like gloves don't ever try to use crazy glue with your hands things get stuck i've had things get stuck to my fingers with crazy glue and crazy glue is kind of a um you know it, it can be kind of you know not pleasant to work with if you're not careful so that's what i'm saying is you wear gloves if you're going to do any customization work like this you know to always work safe and especially with crazy glue and um you can also have someone like a friend or a friend of the families that's really good with um uh, handiwork and maybe construction things like that or someone that's really good with working with small um, things like electronics someone that works in electronics or computers they would be able to do this for you create these smaller pans and have the sections in there so again I just took small credit cards that I'd cut up into small pieces and this way I, I sectioned off some of the larger pans with smaller divisions in there with the cr pieces of credit card that I cut exact to size for the most part so you kind of see, and I, you know, use the larger pans and the smaller pans. You can get these on Amazon or any online anywhere, the uh, large and small pans. And they're basically, they look like this. So these are the large pans. And these are the small pans here like this. So the large pan I divided down into a smaller, with a, you know, piece of credit card cut with some crazy glue in there. Carefully, I use pliers and... Uh, gloves, of course, I don't want to get my hands all full of crazy glue, but just a little bit of crazy glue glues these things in perfect uh, for the sections here. And that's it, really. So I have all these. So what I did is I took these all out of this pan here. So this pan, our pan that we see all the time on YouTube, I took all of these out of my pan. I have them uh, double, st I have double stick tape underneath all of these pans on the bottom of the palette. So I'll show you how I put these all together. All right, so we'll take these here. So these are all the empty pans I took. I washed them out a little bit, scraped them out, washed them out. Just quickly, I didn't get too fussy. You can wash them up really nice if you want and get them, you know, perfect or whatever. But so you'll kind of see these are all the pans. And what's nice about this too, since some of the colors are left in here, I can kind of see what each of these pans are as far as the colors go. I can, I can identify what every one of these colors are by just looking at the residues of the um, paints left in it. Like this is my alizarin crimson and rose matter. So what we'll do is we're going to take this new Schmincke palette like this. We're going to take this new one and we're just going to lift these right out of here. You can see how easy this is. This whole, this whole thing comes right out like this. Can you see that? How easy that is? This lifts right out. And these are really beautiful paints, by the way, too. The Schmincke paints, we use these actually in a couple of videos, uh, a number of videos actually. I think we worked with these about three or four, or maybe six videos where we use these uh, Schmincke paints that come with the Schmincke palette. And I'm, oh, they, they work beautifully. They're beautiful. They're the same colors basically as our normal palette that we use all the time. So you could even buy the Schmincke palette and use these all up until they're finished. And then you can start reconfiguring your palette. Um, to the new uh, palette, which you're going to have more if you want to, if you want to customize it like I have done. So that's up to you. But I figure some of you did mention this in the comment section. You wanted to see how I put together my palette. So let's do it here now um, and go over it kind of in detail. So I have my palette here. 
And what I'll do is just to make things a little more, um, we'll come right back in just a second. I just want to take a quick break. I want to go across the studio and uh, get some tape so I can tape down this, this palette so it doesn't move all around while we're working on it. That, that's very, uh, you know, that's very unpleasant seeing something constantly moving around when you're trying to watch something on video. So let's get some tape. Let's, after that, start putting in our pans here, our customized pans. Not a, not a lot of them have been customized, actually. How many have been customized? Two. Wow, I, I thought, oh, it's three. I thought there was more than that. <laughs> wow. Or four. Okay, there is four. So, yeah, there's four of them that I put those small credit card things. You don't even have to really do that. You know, I just got a little bit, you know, caught up in the moment and was working on my palettes and things when I was bored or something, and I got a little more interested in sectioning things off like this, but you really don't have to. There's probably enough palettes like this here. I also did this smaller one. This is the small pan. And these are actually, um, I'm pretty sure these are, uh, Schm yeah, these are Schmincke actually. Schmincke makes these, the uh, pans too, separate. You can buy these separate online. Art, you know, art, art stores online, Amazon has them, Schmincke makes them. Holbein makes them too, but I know these are Schmincke actually. These all these pans are all Schmincke pans. So I got these online. Very inexpensive. Okay, so I'll be right back. We'll get some double stick tape or something to keep this from moving around on us. And then we'll get to plugging all these pans back in and filling them with paint. Okay, so we're getting back to filling up our new Schmincke palette with our customized pans. And we'll fill those with paint. And again, we said we just took out the um, stock Schmincke palette that comes with these pans and paints, which are actually wonderful. You can use these and work till they're completely, um, you know, you can work using all these paints. And then once they're you're finished with these paints, you can just lift this right out of the palette. And now you can start putting in your own customized, you know, customized palette if you'd like. Um, you could, you know, set up your colors any way you like to. Everyone knows my pretty much my colors. I always like to do warm and cool. So one side of the palette's warm, one side of the palette's cool, essentially. That's how I uh, set up my palette. And I have tons of uh, videos, again, on my palettes. You just type in Chris Petri palettes, and you'll see 10, 15, 20 videos on my palettes. So let's keep going here. And um, I'm going to see if I can find my double. So I have my double stick tape here. And um, this is really good. Uh, this is 3M quality. This uh, 3M is you know really good quality tape, double stick tape. You can find other tapes too. There's one that's kind of like a gray color, and this is kind of like your outdoor. Um, they call it extreme mounting tape or um, outdoor um, double stick tape. It, it should be an outdoor type because that's the best. It's the strongest. And then, you know, you just, we're going to fill up the pan with this. So what I'll do is I'll just take my, I'll take my, uh, just so I can measure it. So then I'll say that's about there, like that. So I clip off the first one. And then I just carefully peel off the tape, like so. And then the first bit of tape, I'll put in the bottom here. I think the bottom is better if I go there, go there first. And then I think, if you can kind of see there, I just... It doesn't have to be perfectly... This can be a little challenging, you know, to get this, you know, perfect. So don't worry. Uh, double stick tape is very, very um, pliable. And it's moldable. So if it does... If it goes in a little bit imperfectly, like if you set it down into the palette and there's a little bubble in it or a little bit of a, um, you know, inconsistency in there or something like that, or it's crooked or something, that's okay. All you do is just press on it a little bit and move it around a little bit with your fingers, but not too much. You want to leave that stickiness on the tape. You don't want to you keep touching it with your fingers and ruin all the tackiness of the tape, but you can move it around a little bit. And again, it's very soft so that once you start pressing your... Once you start taking your pans and pressing them down into the um, tape, it'll be fine. You don't have to worry if there's a couple little bubbles in there or something like that. Just want to mention that right from the start that it's not that difficult um, if it doesn't go in there perfectly when you're putting in your... Let 
And again, I just take this off pretty simply. This comes apart really easy, the tape. And then if it doesn't work on that side, I just come over to another side. Usually, it usually works out if I just move to another section there. And then again here, I just go in. Okay, that's good enough. Again, it didn't go in perfect, but if you get it somewhat good, that's good enough. And you can always peel it out and start again too. Double stick tape comes off very easily. You can take a pair of little small pliers. Uh, let's see if I have pliers here. Okay, I have an awl. You could use pliers if you have a pair of pliers. I didn't see a pair of pliers right close hand, but you can always take an awl, which is basically a sharp, kind of pointy thing. Now you, these are good for like starting screw holes if you're going to be working with screws and you want to tap a hole into a sheetrock wall or a piece of wood. You'd use this. You'd tap on the back of it with a hammer, like here. But this comes out easy, the double stick tape. You just lift it up like this. And you can see it comes out pretty easily. So again, don't worry about it. If your tape doesn't go down good when you're doing this, you can lift it up again and start over. And then I have one little piece left here. I'm just going to go over it with a um, bit of smaller pieces maybe. What I'll do is I'll take, I'll take this and make two halves. So I'll take my tape and I'll trim it in half one time like this, like that. And then I'll just do the smaller piece of tape here, like so. And again, I've done this numerous times, so it's easier for me to kind of show you how to do it. And again, you might get, it might be a challenge sometimes for you to do this. No worries, again, you can, you can always Try to, you can do smaller pieces instead of doing large pieces like this. Maybe you can do like small squares. Maybe you could just cut a bunch of smaller squares and just kind of keep piecing them in one at a time. That might be easier. I'm not sure how that would work for you, but that might be easier to do it in smaller uh, chunks than have to do it all with larger pieces of tape. But this here is working out good here. And there we go. Okay, there we have it. We have all of our double stick tape in the bottom of our new Schmincke pan. And we're ready to start plugging in the colors of the pans. Now, the thing I did was I took this picture of our old pan here. Because this is actually exactly how we want to set it up now, going into this new pan. So I'll sit this over across here. And the thing is, I'm really fortunate because I can see all the colors here. In there you can kind of see that how that's I could see the alizarin crimson here in the rose matter so then right away I know that's my first pan all the way on the left hand side up on the top so I come up here and put that in and I just set it in there I wouldn't press too hard just set it in there give it one good press that's good and then the next one we had were, was the yellow now oh here it is this is the yellow And I'm following this to uh, an exact. See how these are, the small section is here and here. And the larger sections are, these two are up here. I did the same thing over here. These two larger sections are up here. And these two are smaller. And the reason that's important is because you're going to be so used to your palette after a while, <clears throat> after using all the same colors, that you'll just... It'll be a lot easier for you when you're painting. You won't be thinking about where any colors are. You'll just know right where to go because you've been using your pal for so long and it's always the same. So it's almost like driving a car or riding a bicycle or, um, you know, making your favorite uh, dessert, your favorite cake, your favorite meal. 
you almost don't have to think about it. It's just like, you know, second nature because you just kind of know all the ingredients you're going to use or you know where everything is, something like that. So that's why I'm going to set this up exactly like this here. The new, the new palette's going to be the same as this one here. So I'll just keep using this as my reference point. And of course, I'm going to go right across the line here. Okay, and I'm looking carefully and seeing which ones are next. So there's only two large left. So that's those two. So now you can kind of see I have these four in a row. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And they're just like in the picture. And I kind of matched up the colors. And you can kind of see how I matched up the colors there. Like I know these are the alizarin crimson rose matter. These are the yellows. This is the um, raw umber and uh, chromium of oxide. This is the burnt sienna and sap green. All right, so we're going to keep going here. The next is going to be two large pans. We're going to have the burnt umber here and then we're going to have our French ultramarine blue here and then you can move these and kind of separate them a little bit if you want to like that and then we're going to start to work on the next lower section so now we're going to go into this lower section over here. I'll start on this side, cadmium red, cadmium orange, and we'll go across this way. Cadmium red, I think is there. Cadmium orange. And sometimes you're going to have to force them in there. So we're going to force this in here. Force that one in there pretty good. And then we have um, yellow ochre and raw sienna. Like this. And that's what's good about the double stick tape too. It's it's you know it's pliable. So when you start squeezing in your 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 pans, they're going to go in fine. You just have to give it a little bit of time, give it a little bit of work, work the work the uh, the pans if they if they're a little tight, squeeze them, get them you know push them forward, push them up, and then it'll work. And then we have green here. That's olive green, I think. Yep. And then we have viridian green. I can tell right away that's viridian green there from the residues in the palette. Then we have um, Prussian blue there. Then we have cobalt blue here. I think we did a little bit of this. Cobalt, cobalt. So we did two cobalt blues like this. And this one here, I gotta force it in a little bit. That's, it. that's all, again, that's if someone is Someone that's good with construction or something like that, if you always need to, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I just take it for granted. I use, you know, I, I do a lot of work around the house and things, so I'm always using tools and hand tools. My hands are pretty strong, but, you know, sometimes if your hands aren't as strong or if they're maybe a little bit, you know, maybe you're not using a lot of um, hand tools and things like that anymore, whatever it is, you can always get someone to help out with this. It's not as simple, but... This is not extremely difficult either. So we have another. This is the the two blacks, the um, ivory black and um, pines gray. And then we have our two more blues, cerulean blues. I think yeah, we have two cerulean blues here. 
and this is pretty much we have it all set up and that's it and then the uh purple the uh, ultramarine violet we just squeeze that in there like that and that's perfect and now we have this all set up just perfect And there we have it. We used our photo for our reference. So this photo right here, I'll leave this um, on at the end of this video. I'll kind of zoom in one more time on this. You should have been able to probably do a screen capture. Or maybe I'll leave this on for a few minutes so you can kind of see it. You, you can always, uh, again, I have um, on numerous uh, videos that I have, I show you all the colors on my palette. I might even have something here. So what I'll do is I'm going to stop the tape stop recording for just a minute and I'm gonna go across my studio and check on my bookshelves I know I have hard copies photocopies of this palette with all the colors right here inside the um, this uh, pan here so I have all these colors written out carefully so you can kind of see where all the colors are in the same configuration as we have here too as well so you'll see uh, like a diagram of this same exact palette just like we did here but I wanted to see well, I wanted to show you how I do this, how I put the new pans into my new palette, my new Schmincke palette. So now we have a brand new Schmincke palette. Um, we're going to have all, all our new colors uh, plugged into this. I'm going to, you know, squeeze in all my new paints. I'm not going to do that now. It's kind of a little boring. You're not going to want to watch me filling up the palette with paints and stuff like that. But this is what I would want you to do if you really want to follow exactly with my videos and you're interested in my palette. You can do something like this. Um, again, you can also have some help with it. If you need to ask somebody, like someone, again, that's good with um, handiwork and, and construction or computers, electronics, people that are always working with their hands and uh, are kind of creative, they can do this type of thing real easy. You know, you can just show them the video, give them $20, $40, maybe make them, you know, some food, some cakes, some desserts, something like that. You know, we all give, we give and, and receive. You know, we help each other out and we get help in return. So, Again, this is a great way to um, set up your palette just like we have here on my channel. So this way you'll have all the colors plugged in exactly the same way I do. Or, of course, you can probably set it up a tiny bit differently than I do. You could also take this same pan and well, we'll come right back. I'm going to, I have to go across the studio and get some things. I'll be right back and I'll show you another variation on this type of palette. Okay. All right. We'll be back in a second. All right, so we're uh, kind of uh, rounding third here. We're kind of fit wrapping things up. Um, I did find my um, cut sheet on a screen capture on my phone. So this is usually, um, sometimes people will email me. If you ever want to email me to get these colors, I can send you some, uh, uh, you know, basically it's like just about three or four or five photos of all the different palettes I use and the different colors, but you have them right here too if you want them. I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see. This is the same, pretty much this is the palette. Just uh, I sectioned it off just like this palette. So that's the same exact pans and divisions as you'll see here. And these are the colors that I use right in there. And I'll zoom in just a little more so you can kind of see them. And I wrote out each of the colors in the pans just like that. I'll zoom in a little more like that. That's it. And that's the full zoom for my camera. <clears throat> so, again, these are all the colors, how we have them all set up in, in the uh, Schmincke pan. And this is like, I've been using this um, set up in my Schmincke pan for like, I would say the last three or four years, maybe. At least three years, I would say, we've been using this. So, everyone's probably very familiar with all the colors because we do, you know, use the same colors all the time. My pan pans and my colors never change my palettes never change if i use another palette it's going to be similar to this as far as all the colors will be the same it just might be that they're set up a little different obviously if i have a different palette it could wind up looking different as far as where the colors exactly are but you'll always notice my warm colors are going to be on the left and my cool colors are going to be on the right hand side of the palette so if it's a palette that's longer so let's say i have a palette that is longer this way 
all my warm colors like here are all going to be on this side that that way and then on the, the other half of the palette the cool colors are going to be over here like the blues and purples and greens like that over on this side so basically and again um you can check out all my videos on palettes just type in chris petri palettes uh chris petri colors paints and you'll you'll see all of my videos there and i cover it in real uh good detail so you have a good idea of all the different palettes i use not only the schmincke palette i use different palettes um that you'll see and um basically i always use metal palettes for the most part but not always i use some plastic palettes occasionally but in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. We did a lot of fun things here. I'll just zoom in one more time to get our um, colors like that. So you have that. And I'll leave this on just for a few minutes as we sign out here. But again, thank you so much for coming by. And thanks for being interested in learning watercolors. And it's a fun, beautiful medium. We have so much fun uh, creating drawings and paintings in watercolor. We cover all the details, all the methods and techniques you need to, to learn in um in the medium of watercolor and um, i always mention too if you want to you can su subscribe on the right hand side below so on the right hand side of your screen down below you'll see a subscribe button when you hit subscribe all it does is just mean that the next time you open up youtube you'll just notice that you'll see our new videos that we've created Th they'll be uh, on your home page uh, at uh, youtube so there's no gimmicks or anything like that um, youtube is really just they want to make sure you have the opportunity to keep watching the videos that you want to see over and over again. Um, so if you're subscribing to my channel, you're always going to be getting my new videos. So as we're creating and making more videos as we go week by week and month after month and year after year, you're going to get those videos right in your homepage when you open up YouTube. So this way you don't have to go out and look around and search for our videos. They'll be right there at your fingertips. And that's all that really is. The subscribe button is just saying that you like my channel and you'd like to see more of my content. And that's really about it. That's basically the... Uh, long and short of it. All right, so we've had a fun time here. Glad you stopped by to do a little bit of uh, studio work here as we're working on our palettes, and we'll see you on the next video very soon, okay? Have a wonderful day, evening, and morning, and we'll see you soon.